All right, everybody, we're in December now. It's starting to get pretty cold out, especially where I'm at. So uh, we actually do have uh, quite a bit to go over here today, so this is going to be a pretty packed video. Um, I'll probably look at putting in some uh, time code and stuff. And, uh, yeah, we're pretty much going to just jump right in. And uh, we're going to start with the uh, technical categories here at the Oscars, the techs, uh, and kind of go through the basics of what I have right now. Um, and kind of talk about a little bit of the field as far as who else can get in and all that stuff. But, uh, yeah, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll pretty much uh, go into that. Um, unfortunately, I, I kind of talked about last time, there's all the movies I have to see, a whole bunch of crap I have yet to see. Uh, yeah, so over Thanksgiving weekend, I actually went home and everybody, and I'm not joking, everybody except one person in my family had a head cold. So, of course, the inevitable happened. I came down with stuff. Um... Usually for me, it, it starts with like, you know, the sore throat and extra sneeze. I have seasonal allergies, so I'm sneezing, you know, at least a couple times a day. But um, usually with a cold, it's like I, I'm sneezing more and more and more, and it's like, oh, okay. And then, yeah, there's a little bit of a soreness here, and then I'm like, okay, now I've got a head cold. So it's like the first day is not terrible. The second day, I feel like total crap. Throat's as dry as the desert. Uh, uh, constantly going through Kleenex uh, by day three, four. Usually by then the sore throat starts to go away a little bit, uh, improve a little bit, except in the early morning hours. Um, and uh, my voice usually changes a little bit. It gets a little, you know, a little different. Uh, goes from high pitched at times to lower pitch depending on where it settles and all that uh, and all that stuff. But anyways, but I I was starting to get like a cough, so I'm like, okay, that's a little weird. But and I still have a little bit of a cough, so if I do have to hack a little bit, clear my throat a little bit through the video here, that's why. Um, so I was like, okay, well, I, I can't go today because I'm just going to suffer through it. But um, anyway, then it turned out there was some really good football games on that uh, Saturday during the Thanksgiving weekend and stuff. So uh, anyways, uh, I'll tell you what, the one I did see, though, I came back and on Tuesday I was like, okay, I got to see at least one. So I'm like, okay, what's one that might not be around much longer and Showtime worked out? Belfast. So I'm gonna. I'll do a quick review of Belfast when we get to it. In uh, I have it in at least one tech category. But yeah, we'll uh, we'll get we'll get there. We'll get there. Um, and then we've got a couple things to talk about with uh, early reviews uh, for Nightmare Alley and for West Side Story. And then um, I don't know. I I don't know. It's uh, we'll get into the Globes too because uh, they have their um, nominations coming out next Monday the thirteenth. Now, um, I don't know, we'll get into it just a, a hair uh, when we get there, but um, I don't know if that's just me not paying attention or if that's like they just really announced it late. Uh, it could be either or, um, or it could just be like a lot of uh, sites nowadays. They just, they're just totally uh, turning their backs against the Globes. Anything they announce, they're like, eh, we might do a little thing on it, but then we're not, we're not going to do anything with it. So um, anyways... Uh, we'll, we'll get into that as well here. So yeah, like I said, quite a bit to go into. So we're just, we're just going to jump in. We're just going to jump in and start with the, uh, the tech categories here. Okay. So we're going to start with the uh, visual effects category. And, um, this could be the one place they award Dune and it could be a very easy win for it, or it could be one of several. We'll, we'll see what kind of night Dune has eventually when we get to the Oscar nominations and stuff. So, um... I have that in first right now. I have Eternals in second. Uh, it's tempting. I've got Matrix in third, but of course the original Matrix upset Phantom Menace back in the day, one of the, the bigger upsets for visual effects in the category. But they, they ended up really liking the Matrix that year in a lot of the tech categories. So that's why I'm like, okay, well, even if it doesn't repeat what the first Matrix did, we, and it's probably one of the last like major Christmas blockbusters yet to be you know really seen at this point, um, at least uh, moderately by, by some people. Um, and by some people, I just mean like, like press and stuff, obviously. But, um, anyways, um, I don't know. I can see it still getting the effects win here. Um, you know, so I have it in third, but it's like a, you know, close third. I have, uh, Shang-Chi in the Legend of Ten Rings in fourth, and I have Nightmare Alley in fifth. Um, so we could, we could see a third Marvel movie with Spider-Man No Way Home get in there. That's one I'm looking at. Um... The uh, Kong Skull Island got in, so uh, Godzilla versus Kong is one I would say is uh, 
a possibility. Uh, no Time to Die is uh, kind of an outside contender. Don't look up if the effects, if it's you know a little more heavy than we're thinking, or if they're just really well done. Uh, I could see that sneaking in, especially if, if that one kind of rallies and, and comes back really hard. Uh, which, again, you know, uh, we'll, we'll kind of get into it there, but um, uh, we might briefly talk. I, I totally, yeah, the National Board Review also came out with their uh, winners and stuff, too. So, um, I don't know, I might bring up the list at one point. But Don't Look Up was on the list for their 10 best films of the year, so I'm like, oh, okay. Uh, Last Duel was on there, too. So I'm like, yeah, I don't know. You look at it more, and it's like, you look at that list, and it's like, oh, a lot of them, I don't, I'm not just saying it, but it's like, there a lot of those directors are like really well regarded directors like Ridley Scott uh West Side Story was on there so Spielberg of course Adam McKay is starting to make a name for himself here so don't look up is not maybe that as big a surprise as we probably uh would have thought okay and then a couple other outsider ones uh, Finch the uh Tom Hanks one which I, I've heard nobody say anything about it I don't know if it's good or bad I, I think the reviews were were okay on it but uh that's one I'm looking at as well um, and then possibly Free Guy. Um, yeah, we'll see. But, uh, yeah, they'll have the, um, visual effects. They'll have a short list come out for that one here, uh, relatively soon. All right, we'll go into, oh boy, where do we want to go next? Um, let's go into, uh, well, let's go into the sound category. Uh, this is one I have Dune winning as well, but I think it's close. Uh, West Side Story I have in close second. You know, again, the musicals tend to do well here. And, uh, yeah, the reviews for that one, I was uh, a little surprised at just how glowing they are. I'm going to see real quick here uh, if it's still up where I thought it was. Oh, it's actually higher. 95% now on Rotten Tomatoes. It comes out this Friday. Um, I think I'll be able to see it uh, this weekend, actually. Um, possibly on Sunday. Uh, if not, I might go to it on Friday or possibly Saturday. But, yeah, we'll see. Uh, I'm going to try to leave some room this weekend where I can see a couple things if I can. Uh, but yeah, 95%. It's uh, just under 100 reviews, so we'll see. You know, There's a few more screenings I'm sure that'll happen. Some more critics will get in there and uh, uh, either shout their praises or uh, you know, be the, the negative Nancys on it, depending on how they found it. But um, yeah, pretty much across the board, this is like really, really highly reviewed. Like tons of four out of five, or uh, sorry, four out of fours. A lot of five out of five. I mean, tons and tons of higher scores here. And, um, yeah, this is uh, pretty much when you go into it here. Uh, let's see if I can find it here, actually, because I think this is, for Spielberg, this is his best-reviewed film on Rotten Tomatoes since uh, maybe Minority Report. I mean, like, it's been a while since we've seen him get into the 94 95% for a, uh, for a film. Because even Lincoln right now is at 89, which i that's probably my favorite of his in the last few years here. Um, let's see. Um, keep going. Yeah, even Minority Report was uh, 90%. Uh, actually, Catch Me If You Can was 96 uh, 96%. So it's his best reviewed tomato meter wise or whatever uh, since Catch Me If You Can. So that's almost 20 years ago now. <laughs> Um, but yeah, like I said, from the beginning, I was on board with this movie being, you know, looking really good. Just the fact that they didn't screen it earlier just got me a little tinge worried, but, uh, I don't know, this might really work out. You know, getting that late press, uh, especially this time of the year, before it goes into release, and hopefully it does do uh, pretty well this weekend. Uh, the fact that, um, In the Heights didn't do very well, and it's a movie that's about the same running time, actually, West Side Story might be about ten minutes longer, um... I don't know. I would actually not be shocked if this one only hits like 15, 20 million or less uh, this weekend at the box office. Um, even though, unlike In the Heights, which was on uh, HBO Max and stuff at the same time, even though this one's exclusively in theaters, I'm I'm not sure because West Side Story it's a famous name and it's draw, you know it'll draw in some older moviegoers. But like like we've been saying, especially with stuff like King Richard and some of these other dramas that have not been hitting very well at the box office. Um, that that older audience that goes for the dramas, they're they're some of the last people to come back to the to the uh, to the theater seats, and especially this one not having an alternative to see it at home. Um, I can see it being one where it's like, okay, they'll you know maybe they'll wait until Christmas or you know or look closer to Christmas, and they might not go opening weekend and stuff. So, yeah, don't be shocked if that one doesn't open extremely extremely high. 
Okay, and then I didn't see this until right now, but I guess they maybe just recently they lifted the embargo for Don't Look Up. It's at uh, 63% right now, which is not surprising for me. I Again, I was not a fan of that second trailer, but I, you know... But I'm still like, okay, you can still, I can still see an avenue where this gets, you know, some decent review. Ooh, D plus, three out of ten. Oof, a couple people are not holding back. And then I see a five out of five calling it Doctor Strange Love, or comparing it to Doctor Strange Love. Okay, wow. So that's um, Vice was not even this divisive. Not literally like, okay, here's a five, here's a D plus. Okay, interesting, interesting. And then, uh, wow, I, I guess. Uh, uh, being the Ricardos, we've also got some reviews, and that's at about 68%. So, uh, uh, what are they talking about here? Uh, kudos to Kidman, a lot of kudos to Kidman, and to uh, Javier Bardem. Um, yeah, yeah, seems like, yeah, generally from what I saw from about 15 reviews there, or whatever it looks like, they're digging that one, okay. Um, and th- Yeah, and I, we'll, we'll wrap up this segment here, we'll get back into the uh, into the sound category here, but... um. Nightmare Alley is the last one here, and that's at about 80%, which is a little like, oh, I was, you know, at first I was a little jarred by that. But, um, yeah, the fact that it didn't start dipping immediately like uh, Eternals did, I remember that one, I was also a little like, oh, uh uh-oh. When it hit, like, it was, that was at, like, 73 early, I'm like, ooh, and then it just kept going. But, um, yeah, generally I'm seeing, okay, there's a few people that don't like it, but most everyone's, like, you know the three out of four the b b plus you know b minus whatever so it's like most everybody you know everybody has their different scores and stuff most everybody is at least able to say they liked it a lot so or you know liked it enough to recommend it and stuff so i mean generally that that tends toward um getting a a decent amount there again you don't want to be super divisive like don't look up just if you look at just the pure numbers there between those you want to be somewhere like this one or West Side Story where you've got either universal acclaim, general acclaim, but uh, or just no acclaim. Like, you know, we've mentioned, you know, a few other films in the past, you know, um, films that are generally uh, just uh, dumped on. But if they've got that one quality, that one category they can get into where they're like a lock, you know, like Endless Love, the, the song, Blue Lagoon, the cinematography, Fifty Shades of Grey, the song... Um, mannequin, the song, you know, all that, all that stuff. You know, if you've got that one for sure category, then it doesn't matter how bad the reviews are, you'll probably still get in and stuff. So, but yeah, that's, uh, I don't know. So we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens with the don't look up. But again, I was, I was not looking, uh, not looking up, if you will, uh, at, at the film's chances after that second trailer, but I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. All right, so uh, back to the sound category. Yeah, so I had West Side Story in a close second here. Nightmare Alley I do have in third. Uh, I'm tempted to push that one down a little bit in favor of something like No Time to Die, which we did actually have a Skyfall tie for sound editing recently. So they do like Bond a little bit in this category. Um, Belfast I have in fifth place, and that sounds good to me. That sounds like that's the five right now. Um, A couple to look out for here. I would say uh, definitely one... Uh, that could sneak up in this category. It's not looked at very fe- heavily right now on uh, most of the odds makers, but it's uh, King Richard. I don't know. Just something tells me that one could sneak in uh, if it does like very very well on Oscar morning. Like it if it gets the director nomination, it gets. Um, I don't know where else is it like close? Like score maybe, possibly cinematography. You know, if it just really starts overperforming in a lot of these categories, then. Um, I, I can see sound going along for the ride. I have it in for editing. I still have it in for editing. I believe it's getting in in editing, so yeah, we'll, we'll get to that. Uh, another musical film I would look out for is Tick, Tick, uh, Tick, Tick, Boom. Uh, another one I have to see still. Uh, Power of the Dog is one that is probably on the outside, but it's uh, possible. Uh, the Harder They Fall, Don't Look Up, possibly contenders here. Uh, a few people like The Last Duel here, but um, yeah. I, I won't. Uh, I won't say that's impossible there. Okay, let's go next to the makeup and hairstyling category. So with this one, I'm going with the theory that, um, and it does. It hasn't happened in a little while here, but you have an acting win and makeup go hand in hand. We, you know, some of us thought it was possible with Judy here a couple years ago. So um, House of Gucci, I have winning here. I still have Jared Leto in uh, supporting actor there. 
So I, I think those two go hand in hand. Dune, though, is going to be the one you got to get over because that's the one that has the most obvious effects in your face, at least from the ones that have been widely seen. Uh, Nightmare Alley, I'm sure, will have some uh, contention there. So I, I, I do have uh, Nightmare in, uh, Alley in third, by the way, there. Uh, so yeah, Dune, though, yeah, I mean, it, very obvious makeup, especially with the Baron character, the Stellan Skarsgård character. I mean, yeah. <laughs> And then, you know, on top of it, you know, you've got, like, some of the makeup on other characters, you know, and uh, um, I don't know if it's more visual effects or makeup or whatever, but, like, you know, the uh, uh, Fremen or whatever with the blue eyes and stuff, I, I think that's more visual effects. But still, that could be something that contributes to it. Um, then I have Spencer in fourth, and I do have King Richard in fifth. That's one that um, looks like they age up, you know, Will Smith a little bit here and there, so I'm like, okay, I can see that one getting in. Uh, a couple that I'm uh, really looking at here that could get in, uh, being the Ricardos is one. Looks like there's definitely some stuff going on there. They have to touch up Nicole Kidman to look a little more like Lucille uh, Ball there. Um, Eyes of Tammy Faye. It looks like uh, Chastain goes through some uh, changes in the movie. But, yeah, that's that's one I'm not... I mean, the movie came out, like, few people saw it, and it's really gone since Chastain I don't think is anywhere close to the threat she was like a month ago or even two months ago especially so yeah I see that one kind of falling and um so it's it's one that could still get in there I don't I, but I think Chastain still has to get in for that one to make it if that makes sense like it has to be seen widely enough by the academy in general to where it would make sense there. I don't. I don't see this one getting in, and the makeup guys and gals in the, in the uh, voting branch saying, "Oh, we really like this one," and the acting branch just leaving uh, Chastain out cold. But uh, I don't. And it's been a while since her last nomination, though. That's that's true. That's true. Like uh, what was the uh, history of violent or not history of violence? Sorry, uh, very violent year. Uh, she couldn't get in for that, even when she had a you know pretty uh, decent part in that and uh, some uh, couple nominations along the way and stuff. Uh, we always got to, I mean, I haven't seen the new one, but, uh, the Suicide Squad, that dreaded Suicide Squad win from a few years ago. Not, I'm not discounting that one yet. Uh, Friends Dispatch, I've in there. Wes Anderson's, uh, Grand Budapest Hotel won makeup here a few years ago, so possible. And then Cruella and Cyrano are a couple more I'm going to look at here as, uh, possibilities right now in, uh, the makeup category. Okay, let's do, uh, let's do the design categories next, uh, starting with costume design. Uh, so this one, I also think, just from the title of it and everything, I think it's going to be House of Gucci here. Uh, early on, that's my prediction, at least. Uh, then you have uh, Spencer in second, Nightmare Alley in third, Corella in fourth, and I have uh, Dune in fifth. And it seems like this is the general consensus right now. Uh, let's see, but uh, yeah, a couple of those musical films like Cyrano and West Side Story are definitely going to have a shot here. Um, less so, but something like Power of the Dog, if it just really does well in the text here, I can see that one getting in. Uh, French Dispatch, I think, is one to watch out for. Uh, the costumes in Belfast are not really in your face, so I'm gonna say no to that one right now. Uh, Licorice Pizza, possibly. Um, if they're in the mood for it, I guess. Uh, something like The Last Duel, I would say maybe it even has a little bit of a better shot here. Um, Respect and Last Night in Soho are a couple more kind of period pieces there that could, I mean, they'd have to get like a, a, a quite a few notices, I think, by the uh, Costume Designers Guild, I think, to, to get on the, um, uh, to get on the uh, spotlight there. Okay, then we'll go to production design. Uh, I have Nightmare Alley in first. It just kind of feels like since we had Shape of Water win here, the next Guillermo del Toro film, it, it feels like that's, that's one that'll, um, get there and even the early like the first like after the first screenings everybody immediately jumped to oh this movie's just oozing with uh with the look and stuff so i'm like okay that that screams to me that it's probably your front runner right now <coughs> excuse me uh dune i have in second place uh and that's definitely one i would say could easily just run the board here um french dispatch in third uh west side story in fourth and tragedy of macbeth in fifth um and yeah, that seems like a pretty general consensus right now. Uh, but Tragic Mac of Macbeth is one I can see really kind of struggling in some of these tech categories. Um, and this is one that could fall off. Uh, maybe in favor of something like Belfast. I mean, we saw Roma get into production design here uh, uh, here a few, uh, few years ago. 
Uh, Power of the Dog is another one. It could sneak in if it does well. Cyrano and Spencer I've also got an eye on. Possibly being the Ricardos, depending on how much they like the uh, on-set stuff and everything. Or even beyond that, you know, how, how, how big they expand to the world outside and stuff. Um, and then maybe Last Duel. Yeah, I think that's, that's one I've kept an eye on here in this category, but it's, uh, yeah, it doesn't seem like it's going very far there. All right, uh, we'll take a stab at best song. This is one, um, you kind of have to look at, okay, who the artists are and stuff. And even then, I, I didn't, on my list here, I didn't write down um, all of them. But, uh, yeah. Uh, I, and I just have these just in a not really uh, ranked order at this point. This is more just a, hey, this is one that I think has a, you know, this is one that looks, sounds like it'll uh, get in there. So I start with No Time to Die because the last two uh, Bond songs have won. That doesn't. I don't necessarily think it's the front runner, but I think it's one that'll uh, get in there. Uh, uh, Ariana Grande sings "Just Look Up" from "Don't Look Up." That might be a little funny when we get to the announcements there eventually. But um, <laughs> um, again, uh, from the early screenings, everybody said, "Oh no, that it's it'll be a catchy song and stuff when it comes out." And and, and yeah, they, so that one uh, could be one of the better shots, maybe if uh, if "Don't Look Up" ends up being kind of a disappointment at the Oscars. Uh, do uh, dos. <laughs> Doi, sorry. Uh, dos or oh, uh, my pronunciation is terrible here. Orug uh, and I might have misspelled it too. Uh, the one from Encanto that's from uh, Lin Manuel Miranda. So, um, yes, yeah, so even if In the Heights or even um, Tick Tick Boom doesn't really overperform at the Oscars here, that's uh, uh, the the song category could nominate him again. Um, Be Alive from King Richard, which I believe is from Beyonce. And Guns Go Bang from The Harder They Fall. So uh, I have that one in, and I uh, will get to the score category as well. But uh, this is one I can see Netflix coming through, and if they uh, if they can get maybe an ensemble nomination at SAG for this one and then get a couple things at the Oscars. I think, yeah, musical categories, possibly some uh, tech categories, other ones. Uh, that would that, be a good haul for them. Because right now I don't really get the sense that it's going to be high on their list for, like, Best Picture. Um Maybe, you know, because obviously, again, they're going to put a lot of their resources more into uh, Power of the Dog right now. Um, and then possibly more into Don't Look Up, depending on how it does and everything. But, uh, yeah. Then we've got uh, some other contenders are like Every Letter, which I believe is the one that people were more talking about after seeing Cyrano. Uh, Here I Am, Singing My Way to Home from Respect. Down to Joy from Belfast. Automatic Woman from Bruise, which is from Her, uh, who won last year for... Um, uh, Judas and the Black Messiah, and then Home All Summer, which seemed to be the one that stuck out to people from In the Heights, but even then, I'd say, yeah, that one kind of came and went, so yeah, yeah, that's that's uh, that one there. <clears throat> uh, moving on to the uh, score category, I have uh, Dune in first here, I'm looking at it, and I'm like, yeah, it just it just seems like the, the placeholder for now, because I'm kind of, I'm kind of, I don't know. I'm kind of thinking about the other ones here, and I'm like, none of them really scream front runner to me. Like Power of the Dog, I have in second, but yeah, Johnny Greenman just got his first nomination for uh, Phantom uh, Phantom Thread here last time, so I don't know. Plus, he does have a score out for Spencer as well, but um, I don't. I don't quite think it's going to be a double nomination quite yet. Um, and then not uh, Displa, but um, the other one, we talked about him last time, uh, replacing him, uh, Nightmare Alley, I have in third. Uh, then French Dispatch in fourth, that would be Displa. And in fifth place, I do have The Harder They Fall, which, uh, who was the composer on that again? Uh, let's see, that was... Jameis Samuel? I don't know. I, I just get again. I, I just get a general sense from that one that the, that could be one the uh, the music categories kind of pay attention to. All right, then you'll have uh, "Don't Look Up," which has um, Bertel, who did uh, uh, the last uh, the last one. I think just just the one, just Vice for um, Adam McKay. Yeah, we mentioned Spencer. Uh, Tragedy of Macbeth has Carter Burwell, who did uh, a couple of the other uh, Coen Brothers films and did. Um, a few of the, uh, uh, God, I can't, I can't even think of the guy's name now. Uh, uh, three Billboards. Uh, Martin McDonough. A couple of his films as well. 
And then uh, King Richard and No Time to Die are a couple more scores that I would not be shocked if they uh, get nominated. Okay. Uh, let's see. Let's move on to the uh, film editing category. This is kind of a crucial one. Uh, so I have Dune in first. Uh, this is Joe Walker. I, you know, I Since 2015 with Widows, I'm like, it just seems like he's been around enough. I'm like, as an editor, you know, uh, the the editing branch knows who that is and stuff. I'm like, I don't know. Yeah, so I'm putting him out front early. Uh, then Belfast in second, uh, Nightmare Alley in third, Power of the Dog in fourth, and I have King Richard in fifth, and I'm a believer in King Richard uh, getting into that category. Um, the next one I would go with is probably West Side Story. I can completely see that one getting in, especially if it is a uh, bigger player than we're thinking in, like, director, uh, possibly adapted screenplay, maybe getting into an acting category, or maybe two. We'll see. Um, let's see, what else here? Uh, possibly Licorice Pizza. Possibly, um, boy, I don't think any of, uh, PTA films have gotten in for editing, except maybe There Will Be Blood, and even then I'm, as I'm remembering it, that might not have made it. <laughs> let's see, accolades... Uh, yes, it, it did get in for, for editing, but I, be I believe that's the only PTA film to, to get in for editing, unless I'm really mistaken there. Not That's not usually his uh, strength uh, at the Oscars, at least in the tech categories and stuff. Uh, let's see, a few people like uh, Tick, Tick, Boom here. Um, otherwise, French Dispatch is one possibly that could get in. And yeah, otherwise it gets a little slim pickings after that. Okay. And then uh, closing out the text with uh, cinematography, I think this is a, a pretty, other than maybe visual effects, one of the more easier ones we can see Dune winning where it's not, you know, possibly something like makeup or a couple of the other ones we talked about, like sound and stuff. Um, it would be cinematography, so that's Dune uh, in first. Then I have Tragedy of Macbeth in second for its black and white cinematography. It could get edged out by Belfast, but um, I have it in there still. Third, I have Nightmare Alley. Then in fourth, I do have Belfast. And in fifth place, I have uh, Power of the Dog. So again, the next one I'm looking at here is probably West Side Story. Uh, that one I can... Uh, I, I forget. That is... Um, that is Janusz Kaminski, isn't it? Um, I believe it's his whole... Uh, Spielberg's usual crew here. Like Mike Kahn doing the editing and stuff. Oh, I, actually, uh, Michael Kahn is uh, co-editing with uh, Sarah Brochar. We might have mentioned this a couple times ago or whatever, but um, anyways. Yeah, Janus is, uh, is shooting this one. Um, yeah, Spencer also got some good claims for its uh, cinematography. And then after that, it kind of feels like nobody else is really excited for much here. Yeah, it kind of seems like a little bit of a slimmer, a little bit of a slimmer field here. I would, you know, No Time to Die, I thought had some really good cinematography. So that one I would not mind seeing in there. Um... I don't know, unless they go with, like, The Hand of God or something, maybe. Uh, some of those, like, uh, Cold War got in here a few years ago, so some of those uh, international flair kind of... Uh, uh, some of that kind of stuff sometimes hits, so... Yeah, we'll uh, we'll see. Okay, then we'll... Uh, we talked a little bit about animated feature last time, and I, I pretty much have it the same here. I have Luca still in first, but... I'm really looking at Encanto to be the one to beat it still. That could be one that could that could totally do it. And then Mitchells versus the Machines, I that's actually Phil Lord, Chris Miller. I don't I don't know if they're directing it. I believe they're producing that one, but uh, they might be directing it. I I I just saw their name was attached to it. And then Bell and Flea are the last two there. Um but yeah, other than Raya and the Last Dragon, which again, I'm not going three Disney ones. I don't care how well even if they get into everywhere all three of them do. I'm not going with three Disney ones. So um, maybe if I drop one of the other two and put in Raya, okay. But I am not going three Disney or Pixar related films in the same categories. I, I just, I, I refuse to believe the branch is going to do that. Um, yeah, so that, that generally seems like that's it for the uh, text there. Anyways, um, so really with the top eight categories, I haven't done way too much there. Um, not a lot of changes. Um, I mean, I've got the same order and stuff for original screenplay, which is, uh, Licorice Pizza, Belfast, French Dispatch, King Richard, Parallel Mothers, and I'm still saying pretty much the same ones have a shot at, at getting in. 
Uh, the same would go with adapted screenplay, um, which is Power of the Dog, Tragedy of Macbeth, Coda, Nightmare Alley, Humans. But that fi- that fifth slot's kind of tricky. I don't know. I can see if the humans kind of... Because uh, I still have it in the 10th slot right now for Best Picture. Um, but something like The Lost Daughter has come on stronger lately with a couple wins here and there. Um, and that could be one, again, that Netflix might push a little bit more so than stuff like The, the Harder They Fall and everything. But uh, West Side Story will also have an argument here. Dune will have a few votes here. So... Um, I don't know. I just I just have that one just for as kind of a placeholder in fifth right now. But um, anyways, yeah, that, that's kind of about it for that one. Okay. Um, actually, yeah, before we get into directing, picture, and the acting categories, I'll just uh, really quick kind of cover my uh, thoughts on uh, Belfast since we're, uh, we're doing that. Um, yeah, I have to say, I left the theater. I was, yeah, I was, I was really enchanted by this movie. I really was. I, I really, really loved this movie. Um, and it's, um, it's definitely more of a slice of life kind of, it it did, you know, not just black and white cinematography and stuff, but it did remind me a lot of Roma in that way. Um, but I think more so than Roma, it definitely has more of a human center to it where it's, um, and not say that Roma was uncaring of a film, obviously, uh, because that had a lot going on with emotions and stuff around the movie. Uh, and you know, at different times throughout the movie, it had a lot of different emotions that it was making you feel and stuff. Uh, this one generally makes you feel a little bit more, uh, hopeful, uh, a little bit more, um, you know, uh, kind of, it gives you a warm sense of like homecoming and stuff like a really, um, like no matter how bad in reality your home is to you, especially when you're a kid, it feels like it's the best place in the world. It feels like there's there is absolutely, you know, there's no place you'd rather be kind of deal. And that definitely hit home with me because I remember when I was about, oh crap, let me think here. Five, I was either five turning six or, you know, like somewhere in there. Uh, No, I think I was actually, no, I was closer to like, no, I was six. Yeah, we were at six and then I was going to be seven the next fall, but that, uh, the winter before, so this would be winter of like 2002 or three or something. No, hang on. No, I'm behind a year or something. Hold on. <laughs> like, it doesn't matter when. I was, yeah, like six, seven, maybe. Not not quite eight, but I was in that range there. Um, uh, we uh, used to live in an old rental house out in pretty much the middle of nowhere, like an old like farmhouse, you know, kind of rental place or whatever. Um, and I, yeah, I grew up there, you know, I was up until I was six, seven years old and I loved that place and we had you know all the different buildings and i knew all the different places to go in the buildings and where it wasn't safe to go here because maybe there was you know some boards up above that could come down and hit you and stuff and you know you know where all the cats are hanging out we used to have all the stray like barn cats you know kind of deal when i was growing up so um you know just like the the little boy in the film the main character uh you know he really you know you go through all the places with him, you know, all the different, like the, the fence where it's opened up a little bit, and you're like jarred apart or whatever, where, you know, he can sneak in and stuff. He knows all those spots. And, you know, even if you, you know, like I look back on that house now, I'm like, wow, it's in the middle of nowhere. You probably don't get Wi-Fi there. You know, you, you look at all that negative stuff now, you know, it's probably a little cramped if you're going to have a family in there and stuff. So it's like, yeah, in reality, it's like, yeah, it probably wasn't that nice. Even, you know, I grew up with, uh, we were talking about this the other day. We grew up with CBS, ABC, NBC, PBS, and a Fox station. And that's all we got. We had five channels up until I was six, seven years old. That, you know, because it was like a, uh, it was, you know, like, a, I don't know if it was like paid for cable, but it was like, you know, the very, very basic, you know, like things. And maybe it was antenna still. I don't know, whatever. But, um, and that's all we had. So it was like, okay, you watch the news and you watch MASH, reruns of MASH on Fox at night. That's that's how I grew up. So, um yeah, or uh, Jim Lair with the uh, News Hour on PBS. It was like uh, at the nighttime. I remember in the day, I used to watch uh, when I was young enough to, you know, not be in preschool or regular school. I was watching uh, like Sesame Street was my go-to at nine o'clock. Ten o'clock was The Price Is Right. Uh, avoiding all the soaps at eleven, so we'd go back to PBS or something. You know, yeah, God, I remember those days vaguely, but I do. Anyways, but it's yeah, seeing this movie definitely brings up memories like that and and everything and it's 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 all good stuff it's all good memories and the movie really uh plays on that and plays it very well 
And it uh, definitely plays from the perspective of the little boy where, you know, the, probably the most uh, obvious scene of that, there's a scene early in the film where he goes to church and the preacher goes from spouting this just huge, like, you know, uh, you have a choice. You can either go take the good road or the bad road. If you take the good road, you will go to a life of everlasting peace. If you go the bad road, you will be forced to live in a damnation so bad that even the devil himself will tempt you uh, even further and say, you know, he goes into all this stuff and everything. And at the end of it, it, you know, obviously has all the good cuts to the boy just sitting there terrified and, and his older brother terrified. And then he just says, okay, money. <laughs> I love that. So, um, yeah. And uh, for the most part, I, I don't, I don't think it strays too far from that. It's never like, um, cause it does take place at kind of, I don't know if it's the inception, but while, uh, things are heating up with the, uh, the whole Protestant versus Catholic thing in the uh, debate over Ireland and, and uh, IRA and everything there. Obviously, it took a more you know violent turn through the years and stuff. If I if you follow the basic history of it, um, and I do have actually a lot of uh, Irish heritage on my uh, father's side. My uh, grandmother, I don't know, I, I haven't looked up the ancestry or whatever, but um, I think it's both her grandparents for her mom and dad side, whatever. Both of them were like first generation immigrants from Ireland, I believe, or something like that. I could be wrong about that, but I, somebody might have said that at some point. But that sounds that sounds right. But um, anyhow, because um, I, I, this is one I, I know she would like to see and stuff. Um, but uh, but yeah yeah basically it's uh, you know it doesn't uh, it doesn't go heavy into the politics side of it. It doesn't go heavy into the um, you know this is what happened this day. This is what happened that day. You know it's more like okay this is just this kid living through it has the basic understandings of it and everything and all that. And it's uh, really well done, I think, from that perspective. Kenneth Branagh, hats off to him, especially on the screenplay level. He did a brilliant job with setting up this movie and playing it out that way. Really great. Uh, the choice of uh, black and white for cinematography was a great choice. Um, I'm going to look up the uh, the, yeah, the cinematographer. Uh, definitely deserves some credit there. Because it's not just the uh, fact that it's in black and white, but the shot selection and... Setting up the angles for, you know, seeing this house and how you're from the kid's perspective. So it's a bigger house, even though the church looks ginormous and stuff. This house still looks big and everything. Um, and this was shot by Harris Zem, Zembark Locus, uh, who I believe would be Greek. Yes. <laughs> but, uh, oh, he's actually, he's worked with Brown a little bit. I think we might have, I might have dived into him a little bit here earlier or something. But um, now he's worked with him. This would be his fourth oh no more than that he's worked with him one two three four five six seven this uh this is his seventh uh collaboration eighth if you include uh, death on the nile depending on which one got shot first but um damn yeah and this is actually a lot of not only the uh, brana stuff but a lot of other stuff like uh uh mama mia uh lock um you got Eye in the Sky, so yeah, even a, a Denial, uh, which was the, uh, I was thinking it was that one, yeah, the, uh, 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 whether, you know, when they deny the Holocaust and stuff, that one with uh, Timothy Spall. Um, yeah, so that was a really well done uh, job there. Um, I'm not sure if it would qualify for the, for the, um, for the musical uh, music categories, uh, I, w I saw the one for song, but uh, for score, I don't know if it uh, would qualify or not because there's certain rules. That I think they expanded it a little bit this year uh, for how much music you could allow in the film that's original and stuff, but um, or that's not traditional, whatever, whatever. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll see, we'll see. Um, but yeah, and uh, yeah, the fact that uh, there's a couple scenes here and there that are in color or there's, you know, like one really neat shot where um, I won't say what happens, but there's something going on and the reflection of that is in somebody's glasses for a moment. The reflection is in color, even when the person themselves and everyone around them are still in black and white. I, I really dig stuff like that. Like it always uh, reminds me of like the girl with the red jacket and Schindler's List and stuff, just the way you can mix it and stuff. Really, really, really well done. Um, and yeah, looks really good for the, uh, I would imagine, small budget they had here. And uh, yeah, let's, this cast, this cast is so good together. Uh, not just the immediate family, uh, which, yeah, this is the best I've seen, uh, and I haven't seen a bunch from uh, these two. 
outside of like a couple things like Ford v Ferrari, definitely for Catrino Balfe, and then Jamie Dornan, I think really just that uh, uh, Private War was like the only one I saw him in. And I, I liked him a lot in that. But yeah, he's really good in this. And Balfe, yeah, 100% she's getting in for supporting actress. She really does a fantastic job here. Uh, Judy Dench, you know, uh, doesn't quite get as much screen time, but she's good. Kieran Hines is phenomenal in this, in his role. Um, he doesn't get the big, like, Oscar-y type scenes early, uh, but he's so consistent and so, so good in that role without without having to oversell it. And I think that's the kind of performance that I lean on. Those are the kind of performances that at the end of the year I'm always like, I love those. Like Bruce Stern in Nebraska, even a couple of, or last year with um, uh, Sound of Metal. Uh, and I'm forgetting the actor's name now, son of a bitch. Uh, but he, he was nominated. Um, he didn't look like he was actually going to get in because he missed a couple of the early ones. But, um, oh God, why can I not think of his name? I'm so embarrassed right now. Uh... Uh, no, that's right. It doesn't have the in front of it. It's just sound of metal. Oh my God. I'm going to be so, uh, Paul Racy. I, I knew I could get there, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, like, yeah, like him last year. Yeah. It was like such a naturalistic performance and stuff. This reminds me a lot of that. So yeah, it's, uh, it's a terrific, terrific performance. And I think that's one that should get in. If it doesn't, that's, that's too bad. That's, that's the one I'm like, yeah, I, I'm uh, both, uh, even if they both get in, I'm like, yeah, they're, they're both really good. That's both Jamie Dornan and, uh, Kieran Hines. But, um, yeah, I don't know if it's, uh, cause Kieran, I'm actually seeing has climbed all the way to second place in the gold derby odds for supporting actor. I haven't been, I haven't been fourth just cause I'm like, I'm, I'm worried. Cause when I first came out of the theater, I'm like, okay, Balfe in a hundred percent when I was thinking strategically for the Oscar prediction and stuff. Then I'm with, with uh, supporting actor though. I'm like, at first I thought, okay, I don't think either of them get in. I think they maybe cancel each other out. Jamie Dornan and Kieran Hines. Maybe they cancel each other out because you have Dornan who's got some of the more, like, um, not giving too much away. He's got, you know, some scenes where he has to step up to people and say, look, I'm, you know, I'm the father in the family. You can't uh, overstep me. Like, I'm going to protect my family when somebody's trying to influence the boys to play to one side or the other in the... Um, in the fight for, you know, for, uh, you know, kicking out Catholics or, you know, whatever, all that stuff. Um, so yeah, that, uh, so there's scenes like that where I'm like, okay, I can see a, a path to him getting nominated there. Um, and then with Kieran Hines, it's like, yeah, he's got more of the sweet sentimental stuff. And it's again, very natural performance, a very, you know, a, a, it's a role that doesn't cry attention. And again, sometimes those are the ones that, that do make it. Um, enough to win? I don't know. But I thought about it. I'm like, you know what? I'm like, Kieran, yeah, that's, that's the one I'm, I'm going to go with. I don't know if I'm pronouncing his name right, but I'm, I'm just going to say that until somebody totally corrects me on it. But, um, anyways, and yeah, he's one, he's been an actor that's been around and in different stuff, you know, for a long, long time. So yeah, I would definitely not mind him getting nominated for this. He's terrific. And, uh, yeah, I mean, the kid actors are really good. Um, especially, I liked uh, whoever the cousin character was that gets him in trouble all the time, the buddy, the main character. She's kind of funny. Um, and he has a, there's, again, I'm not going to give way too much away, but there's a very nice little uh, love story between the main kid and one of his classmates that feels very natural and very realistic, something that could definitely happen and and, uh, and come this way and stuff, and, and it's totally believable. Um yeah, yeah, it's 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 just a, it's just a really all around really good movie, uh, and again, really does um, really does bring a strong sense of you know maybe not always being proud of where you're from because I know there's some people that you know don't always uh, feel that way, but uh, in this case, it does make you say, well, it doesn't matter where you're from, home is home, and uh, you know where you know all that stuff you know is really good. Um, yeah, and I guess there's a couple things I could highlight as well, but it almost does go into spoiler territory, so I'm going to stay away from it from now. And maybe a few months down the road, I might uh, talk about it a little bit more. But um, but yeah, this I, when it won, yeah, People's Choice Award of Toronto, I was like, okay, that sounds like one that could do it then. And the way they were talking about it is more uh, uplifting kind of story and stuff. And yes, yeah, I think this is one that... Um, that I think people are really uh, going to get a kick out of when they see it. So, yeah, if you haven't seen it yet, definitely uh, go check it out. It is a really, really good movie. And again, 
even though it's in black and white, it's a it's a shorter movie. You know, Roma was like two and a, two and a quarter hours. This one's like a, a little over an hour and a half. Without credits, I think it's maybe right at an hour and a half. So, um, yeah. So if you have you know even friends, family members, whatever that do not enjoy black and white movies by you know any stretch of the imagination, I think they can sit down and watch this one. It's short and it really is a, a nice story. Um, even though again it is kind of episodic, it's that slice of life kind of deal. I think Brana really, uh, really pulls it together and does craft one of the best films of the year. It, it's uh, definitely one of the best films I've seen of the year. I haven't like gone back and like started ranking or anything, but this has got to be the top or near the top. Yeah, it really is a very, very. Um, I'm seeing at the top here of the page here, uh, uh, Brana talking about how it's a very personal film. It feels that way, and sometimes those are the ones that turn out the best. So. Hats off to Braun, his best in a long, long time, and I, yeah, I, I, I can't really think of anything else. There's like really no major criticisms like I can think of. It's like, I don't know. I mean, uh, you know, I'm sure maybe histor some historians like my, you know, I'm a little interested in, in history and stuff. I, maybe I would have liked a little more detail for the whole. Okay, how did you know? How did this really, you know, go even further in the years to come with this whole hostility and stuff? You know, I, maybe I would have enjoyed that a little bit, but it's like, at the same time, it's like, but what about, you know, it's it's from the kid's perspective. So you don't want to, you know, you don't want to jump back and forth. You know, Jojo Rabbit is, you know, the, one of the criticisms I remember I had about that one was it didn't, it almost had its cake and ate it too with the whole, it's from the kid's perspective, oh, except for this part. Maybe this one is not from the kid's perspective, you know, kind of deal. Um, this one, at least from what I remember, it really does not break that. It is 100% the whole time. It's from the kid's perspective, and uh, and it doesn't break that. So, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. It's a 10 out of 10. I can't really think of any other, nothing else is, you know, is, uh, you know, a little over, uh, a little over a week. I think I got out of the theater about this time, <laughs> last uh, last Tuesday. Um, I Yeah, nothing is jumping out at me saying, yeah, th that it was uh, it was a big problem or something that I had to get over to, you know, enjoy the rest of the film or whatever. No. It's all good. It's all good stuff. All right, moving on. So uh, going going into the acting categories now, uh, not too many changes here. Um, I don't know. I'm actually one thing. Uh, Anne Dowd, I still had in second place for supporting actress. I'm going to bump her... Ooh, how far down? <laughs> I don't want to say fifth because that sounds a little rude, but... Um, uh, and I'm thinking Marley Matlin is starting to look a little more insecure as we go here. Um... Coda is just a film that has not stuck around very well. Um, I've, I've still to catch up with that one. I think that's the one I'll start with because since it's been out the longest. But um, yeah, and that one really has to rebound at like a critic's choice. Um, if it can do really well at SAG, um, maybe if the Globes give it some love, that would help. Um, but yeah, it really needs to, like a SAG Ensemble nomination... I mean, obviously, it, it won't 100% save it, uh, you know, for, like, Best Picture and, you know, some of those other top categories. Because, obviously, we saw, you know, three of the five last year for Ensemble didn't make it into Best Picture, so... Um, but a SAG Ensemble definitely keeps it on the radar, at least, so... At, at worst, it would keep it on the radar, so... Um, yeah, that's... I think they gotta be shooting for that. But, um, yeah, so I have her in first, but I, I, I think I am gonna... Cause just because I've had her out all season... I think I will have to inevitably move her, but the I, I'm kind of torn on who to put in first place over her, because and out with Mass that feels like it's a critics group thing, and it really needs to uh, hit everywhere, like at SAG and at um, uh, Critics Choice, which looks a little more obvious, and at the Globes as long as we're all still considering them super relevant, and it, it, yeah, it, we'll see about BAFTA as well when the short lists come out, but um. But yeah, and that's the other thing too is mass. It kind of feels like that we were talking about with uh, Eyes of Tammy Faye, where it's like, okay, are v enough voters going out of their way to see it? Because mass right now does not look like a huge best picture juggernaut. Does not look like it's going to contend very well outside of the acting and possibly writing categories. So how many general voters in in the acting category as well, even how many of them are going out of their way to see it? You know, is this um, like Beautiful Boy and Tim, uh, Tim Tay Chalamet? is that all over again, you know, where it's like, okay, it's a movie that had some, you know, definitely with that one, a little more higher expectations early on. Mass, you know, was one that came out, even though it was out early at, um, uh, 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 shoot, I can't think of the name of it. Um, Redford. <laughs> 
<laughs> you go, yeah, the, uh, um, oh my God, Sundance. It was out at Sundance. It, yeah, it's it screened at a lot. I was going to say Toronto and all that. But yeah, it did screen at those as well. But um, but yeah, it's like, okay, it had its buzz early there and it kind of set up the expectations that it can maybe get into picture and possibly into screenplay and possibly into um, an acting category or two. But um, I don't know. I don't know how many voters are going to go out of their way to see it. Again, Eyes of Tammy Faye is also one I'd keep an eye on. Coda, maybe not. Maybe not quite there yet with Coda as far as that feeling. But um, yeah. But stuff like King Richard, Belfast, Power of the Dog, uh, Nightmare Alley, uh, West Side Story, some of these more ones that everybody, all the categories are gonna, or uh, different branches and stuff, they're going to keep eyes on it. They're going to watch it, you know. Um, that benefits Kirsten Dunst, benefits Ajon Ellis, benefits Ke- Catherine Abalfe, uh, benefits Ariana DeBose. Uh, if enough people go out and see uh, Passing, that could benefit Ruth Nega uh, or possibly Judy Dench if they can get two uh, supporting actresses in there. So... Yeah, and then I looked at it too, and it's like with Power of the Dog, if you do have Will Smith in a cakewalk kind of take everything for best actor, Power of the Dog, unless it takes supporting actor, which I, I'm, I don't know, I'll, we'll get into that one. But Kirsten Dunst might just be that kind of, uh, here's your, you know, um, uh, here's your prize, you know, kind of deal where it's like, okay, if we're going to award it, if we got to award it somewhere, might as well be here. So that that feels like that could easily happen as well. And then Ajahn Ellis, though, is doing pretty well. I can see her actually winning some critics' prizes and maybe taking a few of those away from Ann Dowd um, uh, or or Marley Madeline. So um, that's one. I don't know if I can put her in first right away, but she's definitely, you know, creeping up there. Um, and then Catrona Belfay, I don't know. She's got, like, even at one point in the movie, without giving too much away, literally some plate-smashing scenes, which, you know, a lot of Oscar pundits have always talked about. It's like, you got to have that explosion scene, that big emotion scene. Whether you're crying or you're angry or you're frustrated or you're this, you're that, or a little bit of everything, you gotta have, especially in a supporting role, you gotta have one of those scenes where you hit, you know, even uh, uh, Karen Hines has a couple scenes, like some of his later scenes, there's a couple parts where you're like, oh, okay, he, you know, some of the speeches are kind of the smaller words of advice and stuff he gives. It's like, oh, that feels, yeah, it's like that stuff you'll take with you and everything and stuff you'll remember, but yeah. Catherine Belfay does have literally scenes like, you know, a scene like that. Um, and a couple other scenes where she kind of gets after the kids and stuff. Um, showing a little anger and stuff. Yeah, th- yeah, those scenes are uh, memorable and everything. So I'm like, ah, enough to put her in first? I don't know. So uh, so I'm going to leave it as, as it is for now uh, for uh, Marley Matlin in first. Uh, but I'm going to bump and da- and down. Uh, okay, yeah, you get what I mean. <laughs> bump her a little bit. Uh, Kirsten, I haven't... Okay, I'll put her in second. Ajahn in third. Catra in a Balfe fourth. Yeah. Uh, we'll settle for that. Okay, for supporting actor, I don't know. Because um, it feels like there's seven people right now where I'm like, okay, they could very easily get in. Uh, so those are going to be... I still have Jared Leto out front. Richard Jenkins. Bradley Cooper. Kieran Hines. Um, Jamie Dornan. And then both Jemmy, uh, both of those are for Belfast, by the way. And then both Jesse Plemons and Cody Smith McPhee. It's like those seven feels like they're those are the seven that we're going to see in contention right now. And that's barring you know somebody else coming in late like uh, Corey Hawkins, uh, possibly J.K. Simmons. And I'll, I'll see if there's anybody that says he's a standout in that or you know steals a few scenes away or whatever. Um, there's, there's a Troy Kutzer in Coda. I've seen him kind of go up a little bit here, but. Um, that could be uh, maybe that's a critics, uh, critics prize type thing. But again, I would think something like the humans with Richard Jenkins might uh, take a couple of those critics prizes. But um, uh, yeah, it's funny because he was kind of leading here for a while, and now he's cleared down fourth in the odds uh, by uh, Gold Derby standards, at least. Um, like we said, Karen Hines has uh, gone way up, and Cody Smith McPhee is still out front. What the fuck? I, I don't understand that one. I still don't understand that one. Um, yeah, so I kind of looked at it here. I'm like, with Kieran, I had to put Kieran in, so I bumped out Cody Smith McPhee. I'm like, I don't know, and I'm I'm questioning it. I'm questioning it a little bit because both uh, he and Jesse Plemons, they don't really neither one of them, except for a tinge, a little bit with the Cody Smith McPhee character, they don't have that big scene where they show off the emotions. You know, uh, Cumberbatch has a couple of yelling scenes or a couple of scenes where he stands out like that. Uh, Kirsten Dunst has a couple of emotional scenes like that in Power of the Dog. These two do not. Jesse Plemons is kind of, you know, except for a couple lines of dialogue, dialogue here and there where he gets a little stern when somebody's, like, questioning him or questioning his uh, 
uh, significant other or whatever. It's like, okay, then, okay, there's a little bit there. but And, and with Smith McPhee, there's one kind of a little scene where he shows a little bit more emotion when he's talking about uh, somebody, I can't I think they passed away or whatever. Anyways, um, yeah, there's a little scene there where the, he does show a little emotion when he's talking with Cumberbatch. But yeah, I, I other than that, it's kind of it's kind of a one note performance from both of them, and I, I am not understanding how Smith McPhee is out front. I really don't. Um, I don't. It could be the uh, Brad Pitt thing all over again, but um, at least with that one, I'm like, okay, I can see there's a couple of scenes here and there where I'm like, okay, I, you know, all that stuff. Plus the third act, all of Brad Pitt in, in the third act, I liked, but um, enough to nominate him. Even then, I was kind of questioning that. But yeah, this one I'm like, yeah, maybe I'm just resisting at this point just to resist the popular crowd, but I am. And Plemons, he's been around the block more often. He's gotten tons of TV nominations and stuff. He's been in a bunch of films. I think, uh, ooh, that's because uh, he's a big, you know, the TV personality stuff. I think both he and, and Smith McPhee do get into SAG. I think they'd either bump, they'd probably bump Bradley Cooper there at SAG. Um or a couple others. I don't know. There's yeah. I'll I'll update SAG here after uh, after we see a couple things here. But uh, possibly we'll see what ramifications the Globes have, if any, in the race there this year. But um, yeah. So uh, yeah, I'm not really sure what to do with that one otherwise until until he just starts getting in everywhere, and I'm just like, okay, yeah, it's just one of those things that's going to happen, and we'll see who, if anybody, from this list just cons consistently does not show up or is inconsistent. But, um, yeah. Okay, otherwise, any other outsiders to look out for here? Um, I don't know. Nobody's really uh, doing much there that I can think of. Okay, Best Actress. Uh, just tonight I did shift a couple spots here. Uh, Kirsten Stewart, I still have an out front for Spencer. Um... Then I have Olivia Coleman up in second for uh, The Lost Daughter. And then I have uh, Penelope Cruz in third for Parallel Mothers. In fourth place, I have Jessica Chastain now for Eyes of Tammy Faye. And Frances McDormand has kind of fallen off the map here for Best Actress. She is cleared out in 10th place in the Gold Derby odds right now, which is a little shocking to me. Uh, maybe that's just because the film kind of screened and now it's you know kind of going to disappear until it opens closer to Christmas. Uh, but... I don't know. Everything told me that was that was a go for her getting her uh, next nomination and everything. This would be what her uh, eighth, ninth, something like that. Or uh, actually, we can find out here. Um, duh, duh, duh. Let's see here. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, this would be nomination number eight for her. Um. And yeah, Nicole Kidman, after the stuff for being the Ricardos, is starting to hit now. I see her jump back up. And I did have her in early. Um, I think I'll, I'll wait until I actually see the film for that one. Like I said, a lot of the reviews on it early here have said that, yeah, she's really good in it. But um, yeah, we'll see. Um, then Lady Gaga for House of Gucci seems to have fallen off a little bit. Uh, I can see her definitely re uh, regrouping if she can get a SAG nomination. Uh, Globes, we'll get to predictions for Globes, but I think the Outlook is good for her there. Um, then you've got a couple of the younger ones actually starting to come up here. Rachel Ziegler for uh, West Side Story, which was our kind of surprise winner there at uh, National Board of Review for Best Actress. And then uh, Elena Heim for uh, Licorice Pizza, which from the trailers, I'm like, yeah, I get the sense she's kind of a spitfire kind of character. But um, yeah, she actually, yeah, the reviews, everything, uh, and a lot of the notices here, it's like, yeah, it looks like she's kind of a, a dark horse now. Um, Jennifer Hudson has kind of slipped a little bit, but again, I, I would see her if she can land some of these nominations against SAG, 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 SAG. That's the place she's got to land. If she can do that one, she can stick the landing and get in at SAG. She's probably good to go. Um, one, I, Ooh, do I even have her on the list for, uh, globes? I should probably, I don't know if I'm going to put her in, in, cause we're kind of stuck on time here, but, um, I can see the Globes going for Halle Berry with a nomination, at least, for Bruised. I can see that happening. Uh, no, you know what? I'm going to call that. I'm going to call that right now. She gets in over... Because um, I'm not sure if that respect, if that'll land in the musical comedy or the drama category. And, uh, yeah, we, we can get into the Globes here a little later uh, as far as the coverage and stuff this year. But, um... But yeah, that's I'm not getting any sense of whether that's going to land in the drama or the comedy musical category. If it's comedy musical, okay, the odds are looking a lot better there. 
the drama race, which te- that's where they tended to be in the last few years, like even uh, last year with um, uh, 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 Billie Holiday and stuff. Um, oh, God, what was it? I can't even remember the actress's name. Sorry. Uh, I know she won, but... Um, but yeah, when when that yeah that's one that you know a few years ago would have been in the comedy musical category, but now it's in the drama category. Anyhow, but um, but yeah, Halle Berry is still one. Uh, it seems like if anything's going to land from that movie, it would probably be the um, either one the song that we mentioned or it would be her uh, uh, in front of the camera performance. Uh, let's see. Otherwise, yeah. Otherwise, I'm not seeing a whole bunch of stuff here like a lot of names that are really sticking out but I'll, I'll say though yeah we named those five then you got nicole kidman lady gaga rachel ziegler uh lena heim jennifer hudson and halle berry and i would i would throw tessa thompson and amelia jones in there too as still some dark horses to consider that's 13 for best actress that's a pretty competitive field um versus best actor this year we've got the five i have which uh have not changed since last time and I, the order still the same too it's Will Smith, Denzel Washington, Benedict Cumberbatch, Peter Dinklage, Mahershala Ali. And then uh, Andrew Garfield has really shot up. He's gotten a lot of great reviews for Tick, Tick, Boom. Um, it would be a second nomination. I, I can see it happening. Yeah, so I, I would... Uh, he's he's probably number six for me right now. Definitely. Uh, Bradley Cooper for Nightmare Alley. I'm still... I'm close on that one, too, though. Because a lot of the early reviews and the buzz I saw off the screening said, this is actually maybe one of his best performances to date. Like, better than uh, Star is Born and uh, American Sniper, the David O. Russell films. Maybe better than those, even. So, uh, yeah, that's a seventh place one. Walking Phoenix, eighth place for Come On, Come On, I would think. Uh, uh, possibly still Leo and Adam Driver. So that's ten. And after that, it does start really start to thin out. Uh, I would still say maybe look out for Cooper Hoffman, possibly. Stephen Yun for The Humans, if that one does happen to t- really take off. And then Javier Bardem. So, okay, maybe we do match with 13 there. But again, you're we're kind of stretching to get to 13. But even then, the ones that are like deep, deep in competition for Best Actress, I would say the five I have... Six, seven, eight, probably uh, eight or nine of those 13 are, I think, ones that are legit, you know, good shots. This one, I'm looking at like seven or seven, really seven, maybe even eight, if I can stretch it. So anyways, but um, yeah, that's about it. Uh, Director, though, is also going to be a pretty crowded category this year. It seems like it has been the last few years. It's kind of hard to fit everybody in there. Um, I still have Guillermo out front, but I'm kind of tempted to say, okay... If, you know, since this one didn't wow everybody right away, Nightmare Alley, I'm like, okay, maybe he doesn't have the the forward momentum to carry through the season. But um, I'm like, yeah, so it would, it would come down to me between Kenneth Branagh and Jane Campion. And I don't know, between the two, I have seen uh, these two. Um, I don't know. I would probably go with Kenneth Branagh. And that's just more a personal choice for me. Not I'm not against Jane Campion because she's a woman winning before that narrative gets thrown out there, you fuckers. <laughs> no, but uh, with Kenneth Branagh, though, I, I, I just really do tend to like those more are um, less. I mean, I, I enjoy the artistic uh, achievements and stuff, but uh, the storytelling achievements and the you know work behind the camera with with all that stuff, you know, like Parasite and with um, back to films like Terms of Endearment, uh, Nebraska with Alexander Payne, uh, these kind of directorial jobs. And I would definitely throw Kenneth Branagh in this for uh, for Belfast. Those are the ones that I lean on a little more heavily, and I'm like, okay, I'm more inclined. If I was a voter, I would probably go in that direction. So I'm not going to live switch here, but I would definitely say Kenneth Branagh is the one I would put out front, if not Guillermo right now, uh, which makes no sense to me how he's in fourth. But I, I think he's a solid one to get in, though, for sure. Uh, Jane Campion is a close third, though. I, I, she's definitely one I could easily bump her up to second over uh, Guillermo, definitely. And then Denis feels like he's pretty solid right now with Dune. It just, like we said, we went through all the categories other than song. Dune is there. And that's outside of screenplay and the acting categories. All the text, it's there. (laughs) And it's in competition to win, like all of them, except arguably costume design. Arguably costume design might be the one it loses, like a little more handily than some of the other ones. But, um, But no, it's in competition to win in like all those other categories. And then, yeah, I'm still holding, holding on to Asgar Farhadi. But one thing, though, I have noticed, it's kind of an every-other-year pattern, isn't it? In 2019, the five that got in 
none of them except for uh, um, uh, Bong Joon-ho, none of them were like those out of left field like uh, international film directors. And you know, even though he's an international film director and stuff, we all knew Parasite was getting in. We all knew he was extremely likely to get in. So I wouldn't necessarily count that as as one of those examples, like a Paul Palowski, like um, uh, uh, the. Uh, another round guy whose name I'm still not remembering a year later, not even a year later. Um, so yeah, I, I think I'll, I'll really, you know, cause that's the thing I'm like, they might not, they might not go with it every year. I might just be, you know, obviously I might kick myself for it a couple months down the road, but just for now, I might be tempted to switch to Spielberg for West Side Story or PTA for Licorice Pizza, maybe more inclined toward PTA right now. Um, but, um, or, I don't know, R- Ronaldo Marcus Green for uh, King Richard is one that's also screaming to me. So, that's six, seven, eight. Yeah, those are eight, like, in-competition directors, I would say. Uh, a couple other ones I would watch out for, uh, Pedro Maldivar, um, uh, uh, Sian Hedder I would still throw in there, Paolo Rain I'd still throw in there, um, Adam McKay, possibly, as well. Joel Cohen, possibly. Yeah. Yeah, so it's it's still a good lineup, though, for director, no matter which way it goes. All right, then we'll go to Best Picture. Now, for me, I feel like Best Picture this year, if it was back to the way it was as it's been the last few years with that rotating up to 10, I would feel like we'd have eight really solid contenders here. Uh, seven, I would say, like, for sure, for sure, with the eighth one being like, okay, I can maybe see it just missing. And that eighth one, uh, we'll go through the order here. Belfast first, Power of the Dog second, King Richard third, King, or, uh, excuse me, uh, Nightmare Alley fourth, Licorice Pizza fifth, West Side Story number six, uh, Dune in seventh, and then, uh, so those are the seven that I think, I really don't see a scenario where any of those seven miss right now. The eighth one, which is like, okay, maybe in a weird scenario would, would miss, would be Tragedy of, uh, Tragedy of Macbeth, which I had it in first here for quite a while, but um, yeah, that one's fallen a little bit. Um... And then in ninth, I have Spencer. So it feels like that one, that one I'm feeling like it's losing a little momentum there. Because even though early on, I'm like, yeah, it didn't really stand the greatest chance of getting into like the picture drama race, getting the SAG ensemble, probably not going to happen. That's one where I'm like, okay, I can see it getting in just, you know, from, you know, a a PGA nomination, a Critics' Choice nomination, BAFTA possibly, maybe not for film, but getting a few other nominations there. Uh, I, I would say outside contender for film. Definitely one that can break into the top five in a little bit of a surprise. So it's really that that tenth slot has been the tricky one this year. I'm you know I had don't look up for a long time, but I'm not switching back to that one right away. Uh, so I, I, I like I said, the humans is the one I have right now. Uh, being the Ricardos, possibly Coda. I had in there for a while. I I'm not sure about that one. Tick tick boom, especially if it can get. The acting nomination, that would help. Uh, and then any, really any other support would be a good support for it. But just an acting nomination in picture, it's like, oh, what do you think, The Post? I mean, <laughs> there's not a, not a great ton of examples out there like that. Uh, Blind Side is another one. But it's like, I don't know. Those were, uh, the nominations were a little bit more obvious at that point in the race than, uh, you know, like a, a Sandra Bullock. I don't think she led the whole way, but she definitely, for a great deal of that race, led the way for Best Actress. Um, Garfield right now looks like one that could upset, possibly. Uh, maybe not to win, but because uh, yeah, I think Will Smith and Denzel are both going to get past him, I think, in the total number of votes and stuff. I don't know, so we'll see. But anyways, um, yeah, I'm just kind of struggling with what else would be that number 10 film right now. And... Yeah, I don't really have a solid answer other than that, so... Okay. All right, uh, so I guess, yeah, we'll end with the uh, uh, Golden Globe predictions. Um, And I did do a couple uh, turnarounds here and there for uh, the order and stuff for this, but um, I do have, um, you know, the little things... I I do have some... I don't know, it's kind of questionable right now, right? Because it's like... I don't want to say, like, total gripes because you never know with this stuff, but... um, Anyways, but yeah, it's like clearly this year, all the sites, all the major news, they are turning their backs on the Globes and they have already blacklisted them and they're going to continue to blacklist them until somebody says it's okay to not blacklist them. So yeah, so a lot of the information as far as that stuff, it's very hard to find. 
Uh, once you do find it, it's very vague, and it's always got this big uh, big brother or you know parent thing saying, nah, 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 they were very bad. And yes, they they were not they were not great. Obviously, I mean, I don't think I need to really uh, go into the big spiel of it because I think we've kind of covered it in the past. But obviously, you know, what they were doing there and they were kind of, you know, as open as they were about it. Yeah, it, it, it's not, you know, they, they had some work to do. And, you know, what they've done, it sounds like, you know, they've got somebody there, a diversity hire kind of person, whatever you would call it. I don't even know what the guy's proper title is. Whatever, but it's like, yeah, it sounds like, yeah, they're, you know, uh, in the Hollywood mentality, more liberal, uh, left-leaning mentality. They're kind of, uh, if you will, um, without throwing too much stuff at them, <laughs> uh, they're kind of atoning for their sins, if you will, you know, kind of deal. But um, I don't know. And I still say, you know what, even if the Globes just dissolves, which, you know, is probably the only other alternative right now... Um, Again, I like the idea of keeping that uh, a major uh, awards body that gives the, okay, comedy musical versus drama. I still like that mentality. So whether it's these guys or a new group, whatever. That's the thing I was most worried about losing with uh, if the Globes totally uh, shuttered and everything. But, um, but yeah, I think even as we go into it's now less than a week away from the nominations, I still feel regardless of how popular this show is going to be this year, Regardless of anybody, anybody, anybody shows up, regardless of whether a nomination here really hurts you or does no does nothing, I feel that the media in the uh, the Hollywood media that covers entertainment news, they have a little bit of an obligation in this last week to get their ass out of their head or whatever and say, okay, look, I don't like these guys. I don't care if you don't like these guys or not. You're a news reporter. Report the news. The news is these guys have a show coming out still. They're going to try to rebound from this. They're going to try to uh, to move forward, which, I don't know, where I grew up, where I come from, it doesn't matter what you did in the past. I mean, with few exceptions, you know. There's some stuff that you do that you don't bounce back from. I get it. Was this really that? I don't know. I, I, I would say no from my personal standpoint because what they did is fixable. What they were not doing is fixable and to a large extent from what they've reported as long as it's and, and disclosed as long as it's accurate as long as it's actually correct and they're not just you know patting themselves on the back and saying huh we ac didn't actually do it which nobody's accused them of doing that but um as long as it's correct it looks like they're fixing it and they're working on maybe e even improving on it uh, even further which um yeah i mean what what more can you ask for i mean really what more can you ask for i mean you literally pointed you have a problem is is the solution to say you can't fix it and we're just going to shun you for the rest of time? What kind of a solution is that? That's a world without a solution. I don't like living in that world, and I I just really do not like that mentality. Um, so personally, if you know, without getting too soapboxy here, I don't. I, I just I, just in this last week, the least you can do is say, hey, this is what they're doing. This is roughly what we think could happen. It's like you can do your fucking job for one goddamn week with something you don't like. All right, it, it, you know. It's like, I'm sure there's people out there in sports media when it comes to election time. That's the one thing they don't want to talk about. Because it's really until the player or a coach or something, until they come in and, and start talking politics, it's not really their arena. It's not really what they're comfortable with. It's not really what they want to talk about. And with, uh, with this group, it's like, okay, even though this is supposed to be your job, and I get you don't really, you know, you don't feel comfortable in some respects maybe. You don't feel comfortable covering it. But um, it's kind of your job. It's kind of your job to go in there and say, hey, this is what's going on with it. So you could at least do everybody the goddamn common courtesy and do that. And, you know, even even though, yeah, there's a lot of bad stuff and, you know, with the Globes. And there has been a lot of bad stuff and a lot of very tricky, um, questionable tactics, questionable behavior over the years from the Globes. And I'm not, I'm not uh, washing away anything from that. I think you need to, you know, actually I'm reading right now a book on uh, George Washington and it actually one of the more recent parts I read was about um, how even after the Revolutionary War in which the American side, for at least from this perspective, uh, Chernow, uh, the author, and, I, and you know, and I'm sure a lot of other uh, historians will, will agree with this, the American Revolution, it really didn't start kicking it into the next gear and actually the American side didn't really, or the colonials at that time, didn't really start winning until they had a much larger support from the um, uh, from the slave group and from uh, uh, and from slaves that were able to pick up arms and, and fight for uh, freedom of the country they were living in, even though they themselves were not free, 
even though they were very likely in many cases to not be able to walk away free if the colonials won independence, total independence. Yeah, it's it's definitely, you know, a thing there <laughs> with that. They go into it a lot and it's like it's fascinating because that's the stuff you don't always grow up with in in uh, in history class. It's like the American Revolution. Yeah, Washington was great. They just they just won. They just kicked ass. Okay, I don't know why it took eight years, but it kicked ass. They won. It's like that's kind of all it gets summed up in. But um, but yeah, it's like, no, you get into a little more detail there and that stuff. And it's like, ooh, and then you learn even after that stuff, it's like he would privately, and when he's talking with people one-on-one, he's like, oh, I wish slavery was not a thing, even though he obviously profited from it uh, you know, as, as much as, as uh, anybody else at that time. And then you get into the more stuff where it's like, okay, but there was even legislation at the time or proposed legislation and bills that would be signed and stuff where he's like, I publicly can't sign this bill. I can privately support it and say, yeah, I agree with it, but I'm not going to sign it. And it's like, you just you just see, you know, that kind of stuff happening. So even though, yeah, there's still a lot of members on the uh, the Globes, you know, uh, right now who were there when we when they did not have a single black person in the voting group. Yeah, it's like I get it. You don't want to you don't want to shine too much of a light on them and say how great a job they did because they're part of the problem, and I get that. And they're working on solving the problem. So, can you acknowledge that they're trying to solve the problem by actually covering them by saying more than five lines about them in a little press release? I don't know. I think that I think you, I think that I think you owe yourself that. I think you owe yourself a little bit more of an opportunity to allow them to possibly bounce back from this. Now, if they try to bounce back from this and it doesn't work, like. I don't know, ratings-wise, it's obviously not going to do very well this year, if anything. It might just be a press release. Um, for not just the nominees, but also for the winners. Um, if there's absolutely nothing to be gained financially, and it's, you know, eating into everybody, you know, financially and stuff, and they just decide to dissolve this thing, okay, then that's the way it goes. And usually with this stuff, you have to kind of follow the money a little bit, right? So, um you know, with ratings and stuff, obviously that's part of the reason why the Globes were able to stay as popular as they were and everything. So once a lot of that revenue or almost maybe even 100% of it gets taken out, how long can it really last? So yeah, I, I get that. I get that. But, um, you know, even as, as members of, of journalism and stuff, I don't know. I, I just have to, as somebody who used to kind of write in the sphere and stuff as, you know, a minimal, you know, presence as I had or whatever, it's like, you know what, even if you don't like something, even if you personally disagree with somebody because of their politics or because of the situation in this case, especially, uh, or because of this or you know any other reason you can think of and name off, it's like you gotta at least talk about it a little bit. You gotta cover it a little bit. You gotta acknowledge it happened, right? I mean, again, it's like I I don't like the idea of living in a world where you you can kind of absolutely shun somebody and say, okay, your sins are so grave. No matter what you do to try to fix it, and we will we will bark at you to fix it. We're not going to allow you to fix it because we don't want you deep down to fix it. It's like there's a very evil, almost uh, angry mentality there. Uh, well, uh, maybe I should have flipped those two words. There's an anger mentality, almost evil mentality there. You get what I mean. But it's like, oh come on. It's like if you, I mean, and that's the one thing. Also, I, I, I and this is just generally speaking <laughs> out there. Especially, and I know I'm kind of talking to the wrong crowd here, but especially if you go on Twitter, I mean, good Lord. If you try to sum up the whole idea of, hey, if you're picking on somebody, how would you feel if somebody picked on you? It's like, that just does not get through to anybody today. <laughs> so I could I could use that as, as an example here about this, you know, the people in the press, like, hey, if something comes up from your past and you're bad and now you're awful and you should be fired from your syndication or whatever... It's like, well, how are you going to feel at that point? It's, yeah, I could I could go to that argument, but you know what? It's just going to fall on deaf ears, so it doesn't matter. Nobody nobody acknowledges that anymore. Anyways, except me. Except me. So, anyways. Uh, I guess, yeah, I guess that's enough for me for, uh, for that side of it. Now, let's go into... Okay, we're less than a week out, and again, I don't know. Again, that's maybe on me that I just didn't know that the date was coming up or that uh, they just announced it late, or a combination of the two, and just nobody wanted to talk about it. Uh, it's out Monday. Uh, Monday are going to be the nominations for the Globes. And how they're doing it, still a mystery. And again, I don't know how well if that's just not good reporting, or just not reporting at all, or if that's just these guys are still being kind of secretive. Maybe it's, again, maybe a combination of the three. But um, regardless, 
This is what I think is going to happen. We're, I'm just going to stick with screenplay, acting categories, director, film. Yeah, I'm, I'm really just going to stick with those for now. Uh, and just be... Whatever happens in those other categories, just... It happens. Okay, so screenplay, uh, Belfast, Power... And this is just the order... Or, uh, I should probably put these in alphabetical, shouldn't they? Because that's the way it's going to come out. So, okay. Actually, Belfast would be uh, first alphabetically. And then Licorice Pizza, Nightmare Alley, Tragedy of Macbeth, and, uh, or sorry, Power of the Dog first, then uh, Tragedy, Tragedy of Macbeth, if I can spit it out. Um, but yeah, there's there's a few other possibilities here. Uh, King Richard is one I could, uh, it's weird, because I have that one getting quite a bit, but I think it misses screenplay. Um, West Side Story is one I have close. French Dispatch I have close. Coda I can see getting in there. Uh, then the rest of them are all kind of long shots. The, the, the Humans, House of Gucci, Mass, and being the Ricardos. Okay, then into uh, supporting categories, starting with supporting actress. going to try to get these alphabetical now. Catriona Balfe for Belfast. Ann Dowd for Mass. Kirsten Dunst for Power of the Dog. Uh, Ajahn Ellis for King Richard. And Marley Matlin for Coda. Uh, look out for Judy Dench in Belfast. Ariana DeBose for West Side Story. Ruth Nega for Passing, and then the other three I have, uh, I think we mentioned them all last time, but it's uh, Jane Howdy Shell for The Humans, Tony Collette for Nightmare Alley, Rooney Mara for Nightmare Alley, and I don't really think I have anybody to add to that. Um, oh, one we didn't talk about, uh, she's gotten some actually pretty good reviews though, uh, Rita Moreno actually uh, might just pop up in a sentiment, sentimental kind of vote there for West Side Story, obviously this is the one she won for uh 60 years ago so that's one i would put in there kind of a little lower on i think ariana debose i think her uh reviews were also a little bit higher uh than uh, than um uh, uh rita's uh let's see sorry i was trying to switch screens but it wasn't letting me okay uh for supporting actor the five i have uh, and I'm kind of on the on the fly doing these uh, alphabetical. I have them just listed most likely to least likely. Uh, Bradley Cooper for Licorice Pizza. Kieran Hines for Belfast. Jared, L okay, J, sorry. Richard Jenkins first for Humans. Then Jared Leto for House of Gucci. And then Cody Smith McPhee for Power of the Dog. I, uh, yeah, I'm just, uh, I'm going to put him in. Jesse Plemons, I have in sixth as, you know, that next one. But yeah, I think that's uh, that one there. Otherwise, Jamie Dornan for Belfast definitely could uh, pop up there. Corey Hawkins for Tragedy of Macbeth. Uh, Jason Isaacs possibly for Mass. And then possibly Willem Dafoe, Nightmare Alley, or Richard E. Grant for Everybody's Talking About Jamie. Uh, okay, anybody else I would add there? I'm going to say, other than maybe J.K. Simmons, who I don't think I named earlier. Yeah, I don't think so. Okay. So yeah, then we go into the trick, the trickier part with the comedy musical versus drama categories and stuff. So we'll um, we'll see here. So the comedy musical race, uh, it seems like uh, there's really not a lot of obvious ones this year. They're going to be in contention um, again, depending on how Licorice Pizza gets uh, uh, marketed there in, at the Globes as far as whether it's drama or comedy musical. Right now, I think it's in the drama race. So that's where I have it uh, shooting for right now. If it's comedy musical, uh, it could actually do really well. And it could actually get, maybe not the most nominations of the day, but it could definitely have a higher number than we were expecting. Okay, so with the uh, comedy musical races first with actress, I have Rachel Zegler up front for West Side Story, Emma Stone for Cruella, Melissa Barra for, Barrera rather, for In the Heights, Jennifer Lawrence for Don't Look Up, and Haley Bennett for Cyrano. And again, the only one I could look at and find and say, okay, they have a good shot, and that's as long as they're not in drama or whatever, that outside of those contenders, would be Jodie Comer for Free Guy. And that's, yeah, that kind of feels like a limb right now. In Best Actor Comedy Musical, I actually have uh, Andrew Garfield out front now for Tick, Tick, Boom. Then uh, Peter Dinklage in second for Cyrano. Uh, Ryan Reynolds in third for Free Guy. Leonardo DiCaprio in fourth for Don't Look Up. And Anthony Ramos in fifth for In the Heights. So I have Ansel Elgore uh, being one of the few places West Side Story I don't think is going to hit. Um, and then Timothy Chalamet is one I would definitely keep an eye on, though, for uh, French Dispatch. And I don't think there's anybody else there that I'm looking at that's going to be in comedy musical. No. 
All right, on to the dramas. Uh, actress drama, first place, or uh, sorry, these are, I'm, I'm going, sorry. I'm back to the, the uh, whatever order there, but yeah, it doesn't matter. <laughs> whatever. Uh, let's go back to alphabetical, shall we? Just for the suspense of it. <laughs> and to see me do the uh, alphabetizing on the, on the fly there. So for best actress drama, I'm now putting in Halle Berry for Bruised. Uh, Olivia Coleman for, um, or actually Chastain would come first. See, that's what I mean. Jessica Chastain, eyes of Tam Tammy Faye. Then Olivia Coleman for The Lost Daughter. Lady Gaga for House of Gucci. And then uh, Kirsten St uh, Stewart for uh, for Spencer. Um, so yeah, I have Francis missing for Tragedy of Macbeth. I don't think Tragedy of Macbeth is going to have all that great a day at the Globes there. Penelope Cruz, uh, P Parallel Mothers, Nicole Kidman being the Ricardo. So I, it probably actually stands a little bit of a better shot than Penelope right now, but we'll see. And then, like I said, maybe Elena Heim, depending on whether they put where they put her. Jennifer Hudson, yep, uh, more so for the, I would think, drama. Tessa Thompson, possibly, as well. So, yep. Okay, then for Best Actor Drama, again, if I can do this on the fly... Uh, Benedict Cumberbatch for Be uh, Power of the Dog. Bradley Cooper, I think I flipped him already. Fuck. For uh, Nightmare Alley, so him first, then Benedict. Uh, then we would have Adam Driver for House of Gucci. Will Smith for King Richard. And Denzel Washington for Tragedy of Macbeth. Um, so I have Joaquin Phoenix next there. Um, then um, Michael B. Jordan for uh, The Journal for Jordan. Stephen Yun for The Humans, uh, Cooper Hoffman for Licorice Pizza, and Javier Bardem for being the Ricardos. And I don't really get the sense, even though I have him at the Oscars, uh, Mahershala Ali, I don't really know if he's on the radar for that one. It, you know, it'd be uh, definitely beneficial to him and his uh, uh, nomination there at the Oscars if he does show up at the Globes. But um, yeah, right now I don't get the sense that that's really on the Globes' radar. So I'm not listing it there, but I'll, you know, uh, Audible throw that one in as a possibility. All right, moving on to the director race. It gets this is a tricky one. This is a tricky one. Um, so the five I have in right now are Kenneth Branagh for Belfast, uh, Jane Campion for Power of the Dog, Guillermo del Toro for Nightmare Alley, uh, Ronaldo Marcus Green for King Richard, and Steven Spielberg for West Side Story. I think Ronaldo gets in here, and this is this is one. I, it was a close call because I'm like, okay. I think King Richard is, is going to do well, but I have it missing screenplay, but I have the two acting and I have director and I have, uh, obviously we'll get to it, but uh, picture drama. Um, so I'm throwing out Paul Thomas Anderson. I'm throwing out Denis Villeneuve as close, but not quite there. Ridley Scott, I would actually not be surprised to see pop up here, especially if Gucci does get the two top acting nominations and maybe surprises us in the screenplay. Uh, Joel Cohen, maybe, for Tragedy of Macbeth. Sion Hedder for Coda. Pablo Lorrain for Spencer. And I think that's all she wrote. Yeah, I don't really see anybody else jumping out at me there. All right. Moving on to the uh, picture comedy musical category. Uh, alphabetically, this would come in as Cyrano, Don't Look Up, The French Dispatch, Tick, Tick, Boom, and West Side Story. With, uh, on the outside, In the Heights, Cruella, Free Guy, and... Um, yeah, those are, again, the more likely ones. Uh, possibly Licorice Pizza. If that one is in the comedy musical category, that, that'll probably get in over Don't Look Up or over Cyrano. So um, I think Tick, Tick, Boom feels a little bit more secure. Maybe I haven't in fifth, technically, but yeah, I don't know. Uh, Respect, if that one also lands in the comedy musical category, I can see that one possibly getting in over Don't Look Up. Uh, but I think that one looks a little bit more like a long shot there. Okay, then for picture drama... Uh, the five I have here alphabetically are Belfast, Dune, King Richard, Licorice Pizza. I think I flipped those already. Uh, nope, no, I got them right. And then Nightmare Alley in fifth. As far as alphabetical, I have that one actually in third. You, you get what I mean. <laughs> Otherwise, one still count for House of Gucci, Tragedy of Macbeth, Spencer, Coda, The Human's Mass, and then possibly The Harder They Fall uh, as, as one that maybe sneaks in there. But... Uh, yeah, I actually, um, that's kind of my list for now. And obviously, yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens. But, um, but yeah, that's, uh, that's what I got. Um, nobody to really argue with because nobody else is predicting these really. Uh, let me look up a uh, last thing here, National Board Review. I'll kind of go into their uh, picks this year and we'll see. I, I might, I might uh, go back and uh, look through the last couple of years here just to compare and contrast uh, how accurate they've been and stuff. But they picked uh, Licorice Pizza as their top film of the year. 
and uh, they had nine other contenders for their top ten films. Uh, those included Belfast, Don't Look Up, Dune, King Richard, The Last Duel, Nightmare Alley, Red Rocket, Tragedy of Macbeth, and West Side Story. So uh, probably the biggest surprises there are Last Duel, uh, which we talked about a little bit. That's and I, again, I lean more on just the pop- popularity of Ridley Scott with that one getting here. Uh, Red Rocket, which kind of uh, it's kind of got a little bit of a um, uh, I forget this is Sean Baker. Yeah, this is his first film since uh, Florida Project. Yeah, um, it's got a little bit of that with Simon Rex, like that kind of you know dark horse kind of actor contender there. But otherwise, I don't really see it like. Uh, getting a lot of momentum in other categories. Um, and then maybe it was a little surprising to see, uh, what was the other one I was going to name? But no, the rest of these are about what we expect there. Um, for the ones that I have for Best Picture that are missing here, um, Power of the Dog is not on here, which is a little strange. Um, that one didn't land for him for some reason. Um, Spencer was not on there. Uh, otherwise, yeah, the rest of these I have in for Best Picture, um, other than The Humans. Um, and then for Director, they really, it's uh, like a one pick off, uh, one pick here. Uh, uh, Paul Thomas Anderson for Licorice Sto- uh, Pizza. Licorice Story, that'd be a different one. Best Actor was Will Smith. Not a huge surprise there. Rachel Zegler, though, for Best Actress for West Side Story was a little bit of a surprise. Um, so, we'll, yeah, when that film opens and stuff, yeah, the early reviews see, yeah, temp- seem to lean on her being a, a pretty good uh, selection there as Maria. Um, a supporting actor was Kieran Hines for Belfast. Supporting actress was Arjun Ellis for R- King Richard. Screenplay uh, categories, you had original go to A Hero, that's from As- uh, Asgar Farhadi. A Hero also was the top pick for uh, foreign language film. Adapted screenplay went to Joel Cohen for Tragedy of Macbeth. Animated feature was Encanto, so again, I'm not surprised that one did well. Uh, just to name some of the other ones here that might creep up later, just in case. But they do have a breakthrough performance thing. They book, picked both Elena Heim and uh, Cooper Hoffman from Rick, Licorice Pizza. Directorial debut was Michael Cernoski for Pig, uh, which is the, uh, um, yeah, the uh, 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 Nicolas Cage one. Documentary was the um, Summer of Soul, which I believe is the uh, Questlove uh, documentary. Uh, Harder They Fall uh, was Best Ensemble. And Bruno D- Delbanel uh, 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 was the uh, Cinematography, one for Tragedy of Macbeth. And Flea, the animated film, was the Freedom of Expression prize for Nash Ward Review. Okay, so compare that. Last year they picked The Five Bloods for Best Film, which did not really do well at the Oscars, just the... Uh, um, just the nomination for um, score was the only thing that landed. Otherwise, you had uh, uh, in the other top ten films, uh, or was it ten in addition to this? Yeah, I have ten in addition to that one, which is weird. So they, they didn't do that this year, or just the website I had to, didn't report it for some reason. But the other ones there, how many were Best Picture nominees? Judas and the Black Messiah, Minari, Nomadland, Promising Young Woman, and Sound of Metal out of eight so five out of eight made it into best picture here last year uh let's see they had um riz ahmed as a not uh, win best actor he was a nominee carrie mulgan won best actress she was a nominee yuja young won for uh minari she won at the oscars paul racy was a nominee or at the oscars but he won here for supporting actor uh let's see moving on to 2019 they picked the irishman best film of the year um, and they, they did pretty well, though, this uh, with that one, with uh, who else was nominated uh, for Best Picture. Because he had 1917, Ford v. Ferrari, jo- uh, Jojo Rabbit, Marriage Story, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Uh, Parasite, I believe, had to settle for that foreign language thing with their thing. So I uh, got uh, uh, the win there, though. Uh, they picked Tarantino for Director. He was nominated. Uh, they did go with somebody who was not nominated for Best Actor, and that was um, Adam Sandler for Uncut Gems. They got Best Actress and Supporting Actor right with Renee Zellweger and Brad Pitt. And they did nominate uh, her at the Oscars, kind of surprisingly, Kathy Bates for Richard Jewell. But she did win here at National Board Review. I remember we, we, used to, we went back to that one a couple times for how she got nominated. Uh, for 2018, uh, fairly, they got a few here uh, for ones that crossed over to Best Picture. Green Book won. Then he had Black Panther uh, if, or sorry, that one didn't get in, uh, uh, Roma and A Star is Born. It's actually four. Sorry. I, I thought I saw more that were there, but no, they weren't. 
Uh, let's see. Otherwise, you had Vigo win for Best Actor. He was uh, nominated but didn't win. Bradley Cooper won for Directing for Star is Born. He didn't even get nominated. L- Lady Gaga won for Best Actress, and she was nominated. Sam Elliott won for Supporting Actor for Star is Born. He was nominated. Regina King won for Supporting Actress, and she won at the Oscars as well. Let's go just a couple more. Uh, the Post won in 2017. Also nominated here that were up for Best Picture were Call Me By Your Name, Dunkirk, Get Out, Lady Bird, and Phantom Thread. Um, so you're kind of seeing, yeah, a few of these directors that are around, yeah, they traditionally do pretty well here. So, <laughs> National Board of Review. Uh, Greta Gerwig won for director that year at National Board of Review. She was nominated. Tom Hanks won for The Post for Best Actor. He was not nominated. Meryl Streep won for Best Actress. She was nominated. Willem Dafoe won for Supporting Actor for Florida Project. He was nominated. Lori Metcalf, same deal for Lady Bird. She was nominated in Supporting Actress. And we'll end with 2016. Okay, that year, Manchester by the Sea won, also nominated at the Oscars, and also on the list here were Arrival, Hacksaw Ridge, Hell or High Water, Hidden Figures, La La Land, Moonlight, and that's it. But um, yeah, they had a little stronger showing there. Uh, Let's see, then for uh, Director, they went with Barry Jenkins, who was nominated at the Oscars for Moonlight. Best Actor, they got right with Casey Affleck, Manchester by the Sea. Amy Adams won Best Actress. She got snubbed at the Oscars. Jeff Bridges won for Hell or High Water here. He got nominated. And Naomi Harris won here for Moonlight. She was nominated. So, yeah, it's a, it's a they got some good tea leaves there at National Board of Review. So, yeah, even if um, some of their picks kind of felt a little bit off the wall at times, yeah, there's there's definitely some, uh, some good tea leaves to uh, take from that. Okay, was there anything I missed? Anything I didn't get to that I meant to get to? I don't think so. We talked about reviews for new films. We talked about updated Oscar predictions. We talked Belfast. We talked uh, some of the stuff happening with the Globes and final predictions and National Board Review. Um, uh, I think the only thing that's happened I didn't get to, and that was a little while ago, um, was, um, and I can't even remember, yeah, it's kind of late in the day for me, so I'm kind of... Gotham, God, I didn't even, I couldn't even think of the freaking name of the show. <laughs> For half a second there, I couldn't think of the name of the show. But, um, but yeah, they uh, Lost Daughter did extremely well at um, at Gotham. It won for uh, best film, won for director, uh, breakthrough director, uh, won for screenplay, it tied for best actress. Um, otherwise, Coda had a pretty good night. Uh, that one, couple of them here. Let me go. Oh. Let me go back here. This was um, here eventually. That's a Troy Kutzer. Okay, yeah, he won for supporting performance, and that's just all all supporting performances. And it won for breakthrough performer for Amelia Jones. So that's a couple there. And then, yeah, any other categories here to talk about we haven't covered yet? Uh, Flea uh, won for documentary feature. Uh, Drive My Car, which was our surprise winner at uh, the New York uh, Critics Circle, I believe. Film Critics Circle. Yeah, we can uh, we, we can get into that as well here. That one for... What, what even category was it in? Oh, uh, International Film. And I don't think that one's even going to be in the International Feature or... Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, International Feature category at the Oscars, I don't think. Uh, I'll need to double check that. I haven't uh, haven't dived into that quite yet. Uh, Frankie Faison was also the other one who tied for uh, killing of uh, Kenneth Chamberlain uh, for uh, tied with Olivia Coleman for lead performance. So okay, so yeah, let's get into that one because Drive My Car was kind of a surprise pick there by New York Film Critics Circle. Um, in recent years, they have gone with a lot of Best Picture nominees. Uh, they haven't gone with the Best Picture winner in a few years, uh, back to the artist. But uh, they picked for Best Film The Irishman, they picked Roma, they picked Lady Bird, La La Land, Carol, which didn't quite get nominated, was definitely in contention that year. Boyhood, which was nominated, American Hustle, Zero Dark Thirty, but we mentioned the artist. Social Network, then they had a pretty good track there three years in a row with um, No Country for Old Men, Milk, and uh, The Hurt Locker, two of the three won for Best Picture. Uh, yeah, some of the other picks, though. Benedict Cumberbatch won Best Actor. Lady Gaga won Best Actress. A little bit of a surprise there. Cody Smith-McPhee won for Supporting Actor. Catherine Hunter won for Supporting Actress. Uh, her, I do not know. Um, 
yeah, I, I am not familiar with her at all. Uh, screenplay went to uh, Licorice Pizza for Paul Thomas Anderson. Mitchell's versus The Machines won for Animated. Uh, cinematography, they have an award for that. That went to Janusz Kaminski for West Side Story. Uh, Flea was also a winner here with Nonfiction Film. Norway's The Worst Person in the World, which some... Uh, I looked at one site. They picked that for uh, the leader right now for international feature at the Oscars. And then... Um, uh, the Lost Daughter was uh, best first film. Uh, real quick, we'll kind of look. Last year, they kind of went off the beaten track a little bit. Not off the beaten track, but um, with a less popular best picture uh, winner in First Cow, uh, which really, it got a couple things last year, but then it kind of quickly faded. Uh, Chloe Zhao, they got right for director. Um, actually, did I miss who won director this year? Jane Campion. Okay, did we? I, I don't know if I named her or not, but yeah, she she won. Um. Then you go to uh, Delroy Lindo for Best Actor, who did not get nominated. Sidney Flanagan won for Best Actress for Never, Rarely, Sometimes, Always. She did not get nominated. Chadwick Boseman was Supporting Actor for Defy Bloods. He did not get nominated. And Maria Bakalova for uh, Borat. Uh, she was nominated, though, for Supporting Actress. Uh, a couple more. Just compare and contrast here. Irishman also won here for New York Film Critics Circle. Uh, the uh, Safdie Brothers won for Director. Antonio Banderas won for Pain and Glory. He was nominated. Lupita Nyong'o won for Us, not nominated. Joe Pesci won for Supporting Actor. He was nominated. And Laura Dern won for uh, Combined Efforts of Marriage Story and uh, Little Women. She did win for uh, Marriage Story. Okay, 2018, Roma won Picture and Director. Um, Best Actor went to Ethan Hawke for First Reformed. Regina Hall was a little bit of a surprise winner there for Support the Girls. And then Richard E. Grant and Regina King took Supporting Categories. Uh, a couple more. Uh, Lady Bird won Best Film in 2017. Then you had Sean Baker win Directing. Timothee Chalamet won Actor. Saoirse Ronan won Actress. Willem Dafoe and Tiffany Haddish. And it looked like she was going to get maybe on a little bit of a track that year, I remember. And then La La Land did win Best Film in 2016 with Barry Jenkins winning Director. Uh, Casey Affleck winning for Actor. Isabel Huppert winning for L and Things to Come. Another kind of combination one there. Uh, Mahershala Ali won for Supporting Actor, and Michelle Williams won, again, for two films, Certain Women and Manchester by the Sea. All right, okay, now I think we've covered everything. So, um, yeah, yeah, so I think that's kind of a good place to stop for now. Um, and, uh, by the way, again, we'll look and see what, if anything, is released before the nominations come out. But, uh, and I didn't plan this, because uh, I didn't know. On the 13th, I do actually have uh, the day off that day. I'm actually uh, later in the morning getting some uh, eh, fillings, so that'll be fun. But uh, the early morning, which is usually when the Globes announce, I will actually potentially be up and ready to go. So uh, it would not be from here. It would be from home home. So, uh, yeah, that's where I'm getting the work done and stuff. So uh, so I might have to do some makeshift stuff there and, and everything. But uh, And I might not have the microphone, trusty microphone with me, but... Uh, yeah, yeah, we'll we'll uh, we'll see what if anything is announced. So if there's enough prep time, if not, I'll just come out uh, do the video after the nominations are out, and we'll discuss. We'll kind of see what the reaction is. Obviously, it'll be it's it's going to be very interesting. I'm going to say that regardless of how everybody's behaving right now and all that stuff, which maybe I was a little so boxy about. Um, it'll be interesting to see what everybody thinks. We'll see if there's any actors or directors or anybody that comes out and says thank you, Globes, for nominating me. We'll see. I, I right now I think no. I think everybody's just like mm, they don't really pay attention to it. Uh, we'll see who's missing, who's there. Are there any potential tea leaves? Are they going to go almost like BAFTA did last year, uh, seemingly at first? Are they going to go off completely different track and just totally throw everything in a loop? Yeah, we we will see. We will see. All right, that's all I got. So uh, have a good one. We will come back next time.